Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. What's going on, everyone? I'm Mick Chambers, your host for Quick Shots. Today, we're chatting with uh, Frank Madonna, owner of Grass Hollow Archery and Level 3 Archery Coach. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm the owner of Grass Hollow Archery. That's a small shop here in Schuylkill County, uh, town Orgsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, the founder of the Grass Hollow Archery Institute, which is a nonprofit training program um, for kids and adults. And um, the founder of the Bearbell Project and co-host with uh, John Demmer and the occasional Grayson Partlow. <laughs> <laughs> So this is an unusual episode because this is coming right after the national, the nationals. Why don't you tell us how you did at the nationals? Tell us a little bit about that experience you had at the nationals. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> um, so we shot the outdoor nationals, USA archery outdoor target nationals and the U S open. And, um, I had the pleasure of staying with, um, the Johns, um, John Dillinger, John Dammer and Matt Durker, who was an outstanding 3d shooter, by the way. Um, and and I'll stand target shooter to be quite honest. He was right in the mix as well. But um, for myself, that was my first ever senior national. So the last time I shot a national tournament, I was 13 years old, and it was at the Miami University of Ohio, and I was shooting Joad. So shooting Olympic recurve Joad. So that was a long time ago. Let's just leave it at that. I get enough uh, stuff from John about my age. But um, so you know, I shot. It was super, not super windy, but it was like annoyingly windy. Yeah. And um, we it's a two-day qualification, and then the U.S. Open is on Saturday. And so day one of qualifications, the wind was really a pain in the butt. And we it was a right-to-left wind with the occasional headwind, and you just couldn't pick which one it was going to be. And, you know, my scores – um my my practice scores two weeks prior to that were in the six high 620s low 630s um going out there uh, i did not expect to shoot what my practice scores were but um with so the conditions just, just i was really in the like it's real, go it's ahead. Really quick 620 out of what oh i'm sorry um out of 720 so it's a 72 arrows you shoot so it's a 720 round at 50 meters which is approximately 55 yards okay and and um and so anyway keep going on your on because you did have some success we want to hear about it i did have some success i i i struggled day one i'm not gonna lie i was sitting in 10th or 11th after the first day yeah and then the second day even though the conditions were even worse um we had a strong headwind and it was pouring down rain for the majority of the of the 72 arrows um i managed to shoot like a 305 first half and like a 290 something the second half and moved from 10th or whatever it was to sixth um which the others who were had shot better the day before um, they really fell off. Um, I don't know why the weather got them. I'm not sure, but for whatever reason, and it, the weather didn't, didn't affect me as much. Now, granted Wednesday night, um, while we didn't have any practice on the field, I got one into practice. I take that back before they called lightning and we had to leave. Um, we went to Scott Eisen's house from Archery 360 and shot at his place. And I shot with my rain gear on. So we play, we, we made sure that we were ready for the weather and shot with our full rain gear. I mean, at least I did shot with my full rain gear on, got ready. And I think the end I shot with my rain gear was five tens and a nine. I was like, okay, I can do this. I wore an extra sleeve up here to keep the jacket arm back, had my arm guard, um, and just made sure that everything was copacetic. And I mean, so like my comfort level going into shooting with uh, with that actually 
was good. I will tell you that on day one, I actually had ended up changing my shooting shirt because I was wearing my 2XL Barbell Project shooter jersey yeah. and it's too big. Yeah. And the wind was blowing so much. It was actually blowing my jersey into the string. And I had a couple of instances. And even Demer said to me, he was like, dude, that because I saw you a couple of times. The wind was blowing like the it was I ended up changing it, putting an old extra large one I had on that was a Lancaster Archery Supply shooter shirt on and finishing in that speak for that reason because I couldn't keep it back and I didn't have a chest protector. So long story short, finished the nationals in sixth. Um, not where I wanted to be. I really wanted to be top three, but you know, it is what it is. Went into the U S open. Um, it was pouring down rain all, all morning long. We went prepared for, for rain. Um, and long story short, um, I might've had my rain days. I think both days had rain. I don't remember, but the, the U S open was, was super rainy. Um, uh i made they took the top eight at the last minute literally 10 minutes before we were going to start shooting they cut the field from the full field to eight because of field conditions and the weather yeah um there's a lot of people that weren't happy about that but you know it is what it is um and so we went right into eliminations and i won my first elimination against the gentleman robert hickerson who shot amazing for the national tournament he got the bronze medal. Um, I beat him six to two. And then, so it's a set system. Um, and what that means is it's, you go end, you go arrow for arrow, three arrows each, and the winner takes the set. And it's a two point system. Yep. So if you tie, you split the set. And then if you win, you get two points. And I beat him six to two um, or seven to two. And won my first round, then went against, Dilly John Dillinger my second round how lucky am I <laughs> um and Dilly got me um but not by much he probably only beat me by like one or two points each end um I did not win an end against him but I don't I didn't shoot an arrow outside of the red I'll take that any day yeah all of my all of my ends were two arrows in the gold and minimum you know at one end with three arrows in the gold, he beat me with a 10, 10, nine. And Dillinger, you know, it, Dillinger competes all the time. That's what he does. That's he's, he's a competitor. And, and yeah. like you said, going back to what you said, you haven't competed since Joad, you know? So I yeah. mean, to keep it together against him and then just, you know, slightly get edged, edged up by him. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a good match. Um, Dilly and I have become pretty good friends and, you know, I look forward to standing on the shooting line with that guy. I mean, anybody really, but yeah. you know, it just, there's a sense and there's kind of a sense of calmness about Dilly that he, he just, he brings that out in you. Um, he brings the competitiveness out, but he also like, he just has this way about him and dude, it was just fun. And so I lost to, to John, John and John went to the gold match. And then I went to the um, bronze medal match against Joe Kashurik. We call him Joe cash money. Yeah, and you know Joe just a few weeks ago broke the the world record. Um, and shot like a six fifty something. I don't even know what it was. Um, he actually missed because of the way the tournament was registered. He actually missed getting an opportunity to register for the record. But you know he deserves it, and the dude can shoot. Yeah, bottom line, the dude can shoot. So it was me and him for the bronze, and uh, I took one set from him um just shot too many reds i did i think i i just shot too many reds again i don't think i shot an arrow outside of the eight i don't remember if i shot a seven or not i don't think so um you know i mean and so dillinger's been shooting for five years joe's been shooting for five years this is my two-year anniversary this month of shooting barebo so you know I'm it, kind of okay. All around, it was good. All around, kind of, performance. kind of okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. I know it was a great performance. Hey, let's get to that. So you're 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 doing this thirty meet, sorry, um, fifty meter <laughs> game. Um, tell us about what your bow setup was like for that, because I know you know as you're talking to people who are some getting introduced to the sport, or even people who are intermediates, they want to kind of understand. Hey, what does a, a a competitor like you shoot? What's your setup so they can start to get an idea of what they should do to 
to be at your level, you know, what, what the bow setup would be like for you. So what kind of bow are you shooting? Uh, so I shoot a G Lo, uh, G one, a 27 inch riser. Yeah. Uh, with a biter plunger and a Spigarella ZT rest. Um, trad tech, 40 pound limbs. Um, and I have a John Demmer special made 16 strand string. I think it is. I see it's 16 or 18. I think it's 16. Um, John makes my strings for me and, uh, and, uh, 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 Yager grip. And what's, so, uh, what, what are you pairing that with? What, what are the arrows? Uh, current arrows for the 50 meter game are victory VAP ones, 600 spine with a hundred and grain tip. Um, cut to, I'm going to say about 29 and a half inches or an inch in front of my riser at best or right at the end of my riser. Okay. So you're drawing so, to like 29 or? Uh, I, well, no, that's just how long the arrow is. My draw length is like 30 and a half. Oh, okay. 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 Ballpark. So okay. They, they might be 30 and a half actually. I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but, um, and six and 70 millimeter excess wings, which was a huge change for me two weeks prior to going out there. I was shooting 50 millimeter excess wings and I was having major contact issues and major tuning issues. And once again, Demmer kind of said, no, Frank, this is what you need to do. Trust me. Yeah. Um, and immediately I had like a, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Two weeks prior to that, or a week prior to that, I shot the Pendel and I shot like 580 something and a 560 something or a 540, 560. I don't remember. It was really bad and frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, I was leaning really hard into my shot. My form wasn't where it needed to be or where it was for indoor season. Mm -hmm. And again, Demmer picked up on that and said, dude, you you're leaning hard, harder than I've ever seen. Cause I've always had what we call a Brady lean. Um, but, and that, so all like literally three weeks, two weeks, two or three weeks before nationals, I made some major changes um, and they seem to have worked out. And, and so kind of that, that sort of takes me to the next topic really. And, and that's your shooting process because all those things you just talked about, I mean, you don't mess with those things so close to a, a tournament. And you did so, and then you, and before we started the interview, you're telling me that you were real calm. You were calm on the shooting line. So I don't know how you got that confidence. Why don't you take us through your shooting process, and maybe, you know, we'll glean something from that. Um, so since I would say indoor nationals two years ago, or, well, two years ago, or, yeah, um, I was started barebow in messing, just messing around with barebow in August of 2018. And that was with like a galaxy riser and galaxy limbs, just messing around yeah. from August through October. I shot my first indoor tournament in October. And then that January or March or whatever, after like six months of barebow, I shot my first indoor nationals. And, and that's when I like it dawned on me, like, holy shit, I can do this. And I shot like a 526, I think. And I had only been shooting bare bow for six months. And, and I was still shooting like mini, miniature drive-bys and all kinds of like, like the form wasn't, it looked better than it really was. And, you know, and I, was, I, I, I started getting an idea of like, okay, I know what I need to do, but how do I reinforce that and actually do it? Yeah. So. From that point through indoor season last year, um, really the classic was my goal was to was to make a splash and get to the, like the top ten at the classic. So I just I focused on on just being very confident in my shot process and 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 really defining my shot process. And I think that's the one thing that that I've done is is physically have written down every step and memorized every step of my shot process from the moment I set my feet until the, till the moment that I let go of the arrow or I let the string pull through my fingers. And you'll hear me say that. And I always correct it. And I correct it because the mental process is letting the string pull through my fingers. I don't manually let go. I don't consciously let go. 
I don't um, say, okay, it's time. There, there's, there's, a, there's a moment of calmness that happens with the tip of the arrow settling on my, wherever I'm aiming whether it's a point on or I have to aim off because of wind or if it's a six o'clock hold on the gold, there's a a moment of calmness that happens. And that moment of calmness calmness is when my body makes the subconscious feeling that it's time. And I just let the string pull through my fingers and I draw my hand straight back. And if you ever watch my release or if you've watched video of me shooting, like I worked my last year of shooting Olympic recurve and my first year shooting barebell on just making a repeatable release that my finger just kind of comes as close to my cheek as possible, stays vertical, lets the string pull through and just finishes right here. Yeah. Um, there's no exaggeration to it. There's no forced effort. It's just, and, and, and I'll tell you the reason, the way I learned to do that is blind bail, blind bail, blind bail. Always the coach. Always the coach. <laughs> well, you know, that's why I started Barebow, so I could coach it. But it's turned into so much more than just wanting to coach it. I mean, like, I, it's made me want to compete again. Um, so I'm going to keep no, and that's, that. And that's fantastic. I mean, you, you are, since I've met you, a competitor. You're also a, a great personality, uh, a great coach. And uh, so you got a lot of things on the go. I mean, we... Most people know that you're, you know, the, the lead kind of guy at the Barebow Project. There's several Facebook sites. There's a podcast. There's a, there's a, just a, a plethora of stuff. There's a YouTube, YouTube page. Uh, you're yeah. just doing a fantastic job of getting uh, Barebow out there. And, and, you know, and Barebow, you know, transcends. I mean, we say Barebow, but traditional archery in general. I think that you, you kind of, it's, it's good to have our name out there um, uh, in the Barebow world. And, and you're doing a fantastic job. So I was going to ask you about how you aim. Um, are you going to, but are you going to get philosophical on me? How you, I don't aim. I just, I let the, the, no, uh-uh. yeah. no, I mean, I, I aim. Okay. No, it's not that How I do don't do aim. It? It's just, it's just the, the aim is just part of the process. It's not, it's a separate, it's set. The process is, is a, is a conglomerate of individual steps. And you know, the way I set is that dog too, too loud in the background. Oh, it's good. Yeah. It's good on the, it's good. All right, the, the shot process is broken down into separate steps. So there's a lot of conscious things and, and we call them the conscious part of the shot. It's, right. I consciously set my hook, yeah. but like I deliberately set my hook and I set my, gri- my grip afterwards so that it's always the same order. It's yeah. done the same way, it never changes. After I set my hook, and I set my grip, I always stand up straight. I, well, I always reposture, I call it. Okay. I stand up, I make sure that my, my head is over my spine, my spine is, you know, is erect and in good position. Yep. Um, and then from that, from that point, everything is conscious until the point with which I start to aim. And at the, during my aim is where I flip from, from conscious to subconscious. And it's managing that transition is where people who struggle with target panic, that's where, that's the part that they, um, that they always fight. So what I do, the way I train is I, I compartmentalize all of those, those things within the movement. So I train the archery shot, like it's an athletic movement. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, you don't train a basketball jump shot by just doing a jump shots over and over and over again. You know, you, you, you train to jump higher, you train the shot and the follow through yeah. and you, you, you do shooting form and you, you do the whole process, but eventually you put it all together because you train them, you separate it and then you put it all together. And the more, the better I get, the higher I get, uh, or the, the stronger of a jumper I become, the more accurate my form becomes, the more experience I, I get at shooting at further distance from a set position, and then you put it together, well, you're gonna, your jump shot's going to get better. And then you learn to make it in during a game. And the more you do it in the game, the more that you make. A, a basketball coach, if you don't know, or I don't know if I've ever really talked about it, like I coached college basketball. 
and I ref varsity basketball for, for 10 years. Like basketball was my sport before really getting back into archery. It's when, it's when you're, if you're in a basketball game and you have a shooting guard and that guard is off, a good coach once told me, one of my, one of my favorite coaches ever, he told me, listen, you're a shooter. If you miss 30, shoot 31. You got to stay in. You got to. You got to stay in the in that mind frame. You have to be able to turn the switch on when you turn the switch on. You turn it off when you turn it off. Well, you know, I've come to the the realization that in barebell, the more you do it right, the easier you'll retain it. So again, if you're just standing there arbitrarily throwing arrows down range, you're not you're not really going to retain anything because you're not training anything. You're just shooting arrows. Right. So, you know, I really, really have adopted the idea that I'm constantly training, constantly trying to make something better, whether it's my bow arm, whether it's my aim, whether it's my release, whether it's my strength, or like this weekend, my, my goal was to train my nerves. I was adamant that I was not going to let the, my nerves take over the tournament. I was going to stay in my shot process. I was not focused on winning. But I, but I know that the, the secret to winning is not being concerned about what everybody else is doing, worrying about weather, worrying about all of the things that I can't control. I need to worry about me because I can control me and I can control my emotions and my heart rate. So that's, that was, that was the route that I took. That's and, awesome. I mean, that's awesome. You know, and that's, and I, I have to, I have to give credit where credit is due. Demer and Grayson are really the two that, like we've had in-depth conversations about this because, you know, not that you people care too much about winning. I'm not saying that like the competitive spirit can't come out in you and make you really concentrate on things, but but when you when you rely on the competitive or the emotional edge to make you a better um, to to make you better when it comes to archery, mm-hmm. what what's your motive to train that? You know, what's your motive when you're just shooting in the local league, you know, and there's nobody to compete against? Like you, you just, I think you have to, you have to be inner driven all the time, not just in a tournament. And in my opinion, that's, that's what separates the, the intermediate shooter from like the higher end shooter. That's what, that's why John has been at the level he has for so long because he, he, he's driven inside like he he's driven in in here and and in here in a different way than anybody else is um and and you and it it comes out in his his effort and his tuning um and and in his willingness to share information and to help grow the sport too like he genuinely cares about barabo he cares that it doesn't matter who you are if you need help he's willing to help um you know and and a Part of part of that has definitely been carried over. Or maybe a something that I'd like to to share as well because, you know, I've got a I've got a, a coach's eye. I I see things differently than I think a lot of other coaches do. And there's not let's face it, there's not a ton of barebow coaches out there. Um, there's really not a ton out there that have athletes that are shooting near a level um of the best in the country and is, as a coach is able to shoot at that level too and that was really my goal you and i have had this discussion you know it's 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 not not that you have to, a coach has to be that to be validated but like for me um i'm not content unless i can do it that's just who i am that makes sense no and you certainly validated yourself this uh past week i mean just shooting amazing i know i keep harping on that but it's true. I mean, you did, and you did such a great job. So, hey, um, so getting back to my question, how do you aim? So I guess it's with both eyes open? No, I'm just kidding. We'll move on. <laughs> no, no. Actually, let, let me just briefly talk about that. Yeah. That's another change that I had made two weeks ago. Okay. So all of indoor season, I harped about shooting with both eyes open, and I put. I always joke around about putting the glass on this side of my glasses, or the glass, the uh, yeah, tape. tape. Yeah. I put tape here so it blocks out my left eye. Yeah. And when I when I aim and again that came from Grayson and John um to figure out how to do it because it makes me so less like herky jerky mm-hmm. the target panic literally just goes away right and it took me a week or so to get acclimated to it but I tried all of outdoor season 
to shoot squinting my left eye just enough to clear it up and then and all that does and i and the crazy thing is i know this and i teach this and i still refused i just i was determined to be able to shoot with my contacts in is all it really was yeah um and it just what every time you do this you create tension all the way down into your neck and target panic hates good tension and it loves bad tension and that is bad tension right so no absolutely i mean for a guy who struggles with target panic i know that you know i, I squint the more i have target panic the harder i squint that eye and it just goes all wrong so yeah no it's that's good advice hey um just moving on a little bit uh i i don't want to um I don't want to slow you down on your train of thought either, but this kind of leads us to my next question. You know, what's one uh, piece of advice that you would give to a new traditional archer? I mean, you've already given some great advice. There's been a plethora of advice in here. So, but, but is there anything in particular that stands out? Are we talking like a, a target archer or a bow hunter? Yeah, so that's a good question. So I think I'm going to leave that to you. Um, it's, it, it won't matter. It's like, you know, you, I know you're a hunter too. So yeah. it's a hunting tip for, for someone who's who been in trad archery and wants to go hunting or someone who wants so, to go to competition. So I think, I think the first set of advice I would give either, either one is get a coach, get a coach, get a coach, um, get someone who is accustomed and has experienced teaching form because I think form needs to come before mental process. Okay, I think, I think, I think good form, a, a stable shot process and a good alignment create a solid mental process. All right. So I have some random questions to, to, to finish this off and um, let me just read these. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can answer these or don't answer these. It's up to you. No, <laughs> answer every single one of them. Uh, recently, you got a new tattoo. Rumor has it you cried the whole time, not because of the pain, but because of your loss of innocence. Do you want to carry a comment on that? Um, fake news, but I did get a <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> yeah, tell us about your tattoo. What did you get a tattoo of? Uh, I'll just show you. It's my family crest, actually. So. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Is that a uh, boar on there? It is. There's a there's an ongoing joke with my wife though, because she was like, "Make sure that the tattoo is big enough that it doesn't look like Pumbaa from The Lion King." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did a good job of not making it look like that. No, so. it looks great. No, it's yeah, fantastic. Came out all right. It's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be an upper arm sleeve. Love it. So. We love it. Um, okay, <laughs> question number two: If you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? And why is it peanut butter? Go. It would not be peanut butter because I'm yeah. allergic. <laughs> Thanks for that. And if I had to actually pick a food, it would be venison. Venison, really? Oh, yeah. So would that, I mean, would you rather have venison than like an elk? Or uh, is that better than elk? Uh, I can't really. I don't have red elk. Uh, I don't have access to elk here in Eastern right. PA. So I would, that's the default is venison. Okay, cool. And this is the last question and I'll let you go and you've been a great sport and I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, you have to give up one thing. What would it be? A, hunting and fishing. B, your boyish good looks. Your family business, Grass Hollow Archery. Big shout out to you guys. Or D, the poster in your room, in your bedroom of John Demmer. Which one of those? Uh, well, definitely not the poster. Um, what do you? What were the other options? Hunting, fishing, your boyish good looks, or your family business? Or oh, boyish good looks. I'd give that up in a heartbeat. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, you've been a good sport. Uh, this has been fun. I, I'm glad we got the chance to chat and and get your name out there. Um, I know you, of course, and the bear boat community knows you. I mean, it's just. Other people need to start to understand who you are and what you do and how much you contribute to um, uh, our sport. Um, and I know we talk a lot about bear bow, but you can lump all that in and all your coaching skill and all your, your ability um, uh, to the trad community too. So really appreciate what you do. Um, and 
Man, do you want to give a shout out to anyone or anything before? Uh, and then give us your details on how people can contact you. Uh, well, you can follow me on TikTok. For a little while until it's shut down. Until it's shut down. Um, I do make some funny archery TikToks every now and again. Um, but I don't have the time for that right now because uh, I'm going back to teach here shortly in school. Um, just everything is uh, either F McD archery or Frank McD archery literally everywhere it's one of the two so um or, or the barebow project on instagram you know and and whatnot i mean it's it, the the goal of the barebow project is to is to to take the finite pieces of barebow and to put them in a way that people can understand them and provide them in some kind of a platform whether it's online coaching or the tournaments or just general knowledge the podcast or you know the you know so that's that's how things started and that's the direction that I want people to understand that that's 100 percent the goal is to put out tested and confirmed stuff that works um Come and up. and uh, sorry that's a little outside the scope of what you asked no me, no but, that's um that's exactly what I wanted I wanted you to to let everyone know what you do and why you do it and uh Again, yeah. you're a competitor, and it's nice to have a coach that's competitor. So, I mean, don't forget to check out Frank on the Barebow Project. Um, and on Facebook, it's there. Instagram, as he said. Um, Archery Geek, uh, you can check check us out on YouTube and now this podcast, too. And hopefully we'll yeah. get this up on the Barebow Project. So do, trying to do a lot of good things for the community, and we really appreciate it. Thanks again, Frank. Uh, we'll talk to you later. We're out. All right, man.